Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Joining us today is our good friend, Dr. Mark Faber, the editor and publisher of Gloom, Boom and Doom Report. Welcome back, sir. Thank you that I'm still a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, you're always a friend of Wall Street Silver. Uh, so, Dr. Faber, let's uh, let's look into the economy and what's happening around the world uh, and the Federal Reserve. Let's say another crisis like COVID happens or a world war uh, breaks out. Will another black swan event like that cause the Fed to drop interest rates back to zero and, and do quantitative easing? And, and how could they pull that off with inflation being this high? Well, I mean, uh, we're not sure what kind of a black swan event will occur, but of some concern to observers is obviously uh, or is the obvious escalation of the war in Ukraine, which is no longer a war of in Ukraine and for Ukraine or for Ukrainian territory, but it's kind of morphed into a war between the U.S., the ultra-conservative uh, neocons against evil Mr. Putin. This is <laughs> essentially, <laughs> in order to simplify matters, let's put it that way. 88% of the world doesn't agree with the theme that Putin is necessarily evil, and they have uh, not much sympathy for the U.S., but they stand aside for the time being. Now, the escalation may happen because, as an official suggested, NATO should send troops to Ukraine. Yeah, I see. And that. if this becomes obvious, then uh, an escalation will likely take place, and it may be very unpleasant for NATO. <laughs> and and what happens to uh, like the economy? Like, how important is it to own physical gold and silver in times like these? Will will a central bank digital currency be the ultimate thing that erases people's freedom? Like, how important is it to have gold? Well, as you know, I have a preference. Maybe it's because of my age, <laughs> but, I, but I have a preference for uh, precious metals, gold, silver, platinum. But I can see some advantages that uh, Bitcoins would offer. And uh, I mean, I just want to say about Bitcoin the following. Uh, we had yesterday the announcement that General Motors would use the Tesla chargers in the United States. In other words, Tesla uh, chargers are becoming the standard, mm -hmm. like a plug that you have at home. Is a standard in the U.S. It doesn't work anywhere else, but in the U.S. it works. <laughs> <laughs> but, and so I think Bitcoin will become the standard of uh, cryptocurrencies. Mm. And everything else, uh, there will be cryptocurrencies that perform better, and most of them will fall by the wayside because uh, of lack of interest, Mm -hmm. or of fraudulent activities and so forth. But uh, I, I could see that Bitcoin becomes an investment class, which it has to some extent already become. But as I said, for my uh, purposes, I prefer physical gold because I'm not going to travel anymore as much as I used to do. And I prefer to have uh, some of my reserves, including also stock portfolios here in Thailand, because I strongly believe that one day uh, remittances will not be permitted anymore. It's okay. already become more difficult to make remittances in the sense that the banks ask you for all sorts of details, which is really none of their business and certainly none of the business of the compliance department. The client should ask uh, about the solidity of banks and the reputation of banks, right. and not vice versa. I think it's it, it, it can only happen in a vogue <laughs> society that the bank would ask a client why he remits, say, $10,000 from A to B. 
Right. The client should ask the bank, are you capable to do that? Or will you steal my money? <laughs> yeah, you could tell that the banking system is getting really weird in the West. And I think one of the uh, biggest questions out there, Dr. Faber, is have we made it through the worst of the banking crisis? Or does common sense kick in and say this contagion will actually spread to different sectors? What are you keeping an eye on? Well, I think we haven't really had a crisis yet. We had uh regional crisis in the sense that uh, well the crisis the cause is uh the decline in the value or the collapse in the value of commercial properties they have really imploded and it was sort of to be expected because of several trends that are permanent trends first of all more people will work from their homes more people can work from their homes. Mm -hmm. And two, the economy is not growing all that much. So the requirement for additional office space is not growing that much. And new cities are coming up and supplies have come up and so forth and so on. So that was to be expected. And that hit regional banks. But uh, the Federal Reserve, which is in charge of basically the banking system, they, as uh, financial supervising authorities, they should have seen this. Mm -hmm. But no, they were all sleeping and looking at their mobile phone and the <laughs> Facebook profiles and listening to speeches of other idiots at the Fed who <laughs> <laughs> tell them a nice story about something that has nothing to do with the reality of the real estate market. And it's not the first time. Janet Yellen was the president of the San Francisco Federal Reserve when the whole real estate boom collapsed in 2007-2008. And she was not only in charge, the San Francisco Fed is not only in, in charge of California, but also of Nevada <laughs> and of Arizona, oh, the areas God. where the real estate market collapsed the most. But Yellen, she didn't see that coming at all. In fact, she always maintained that property prices would be stable. <laughs> and now she's claiming the same thing and kind of giving the same type of uh, speeches as the economy will be fine and there will be like of uh, course, no, no of crazy course. recession coming up soon. So do you think it'll be uh, like I I've seen recent articles saying that banking deposits are at the lowest level in the past two, three years. And does the Fed have to really what, what do they have to do, Dr. Faber, or are they just engineering a recession? No, they're not engineering a recession. They think they can avoid the recession. Right. They don't believe a recession is coming. But in you see, my view is we are already in a recession. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, we have two economies. We have the economy of the 1% at the top of the food chain. They have no worries. They are the wealthy people. Uh, and then you have the economy of 80% of the U.S. or 70% of the U.S. who are lower income uh, recipients. Mm -hmm. And the lower income recipients, their wages do go up, but the wages do go up less than the cost of living. So in real terms, we measure GDP, I mean, an economy in two, two ways. Gross domestic product and gross domestic investment uh, income, gross domestic income, GDI. Mm -hmm. GDI is going down in real terms. So in my view, for 80% of the US and 80% of the world's population, for them, they are already in recession. Maybe it recovered from the lows of the COVID crisis. But I observe when I travel and when I move around cities, that business has not recovered to the 2018-2019 level. Mm -hmm. 
Right. Now, someone in New York will come and tell me where the restaurants are full. Yes, because half the restaurants are closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see all the restaurants, uh, even in uh, cities like San Francisco's, Walmart pulling out, and a lot of these huge uh, huge brand names are pulling out just because of the weird policies that are put in place by that city where you can just steal and nobody can arrest you them. are very polite the policies are put in place by these morons that are <laughs> populated our government yeah absolutely <laughs> you uh, you nailed it <laughs> and 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 dr faber some are but saying it's a hard part to believe is that the mayor of chicago the previous mayor of chicago lori lightfoot is has received a teaching job as a professor at Harvard. This is the big, we live in an insane society. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And some are saying now, Dr. Faber, that uh, as this banking crisis continues to spread, it's, there's going to be a huge sharp uh, dr drive down in equities. Is that a huge possibility? Well, but the equity question is not so easy to answer because uh, they have increased interest rates, but at the same time, they have created liquidity. They have taken liquidity away through the reduction in the balance sheet of the Fed, but they've created liquidity in the sense that they lent money to the regional banks. Mm -hmm. And liquidity is a very funny thing. You know, the poor guy on the street, the homeless, and so forth, they have no liquidity except the subsidies they get from the government. Right. Uh, normally from Democrats. But uh, wealthy people have plenty of liquidity. I have plenty of liquidity. I have no liquidity crisis at all. But uh, as I said, I know lots of people that don't have a penny in their pocket. I mean, it's tragic. Yeah, it but is lots tragic. of people. I I know people who work in nightclubs. I tell you, they have they have no money, zero. Yeah, that's sad. It's almost like the whole uh, you a big part of the world. You can see it in Canada, in the U.S. A major like what you said. There's two different economies. One for the top uh, 1%, like whatever the military complex and the stock markets, and and then you have the rest of the actual economy and people are struggling out there and it's, it's bad. I tell you, it, it deeply disturbs me. And I always try to help, but you understand, one person, I alone can't help the whole world. I'm not a world <laughs> improver, but I can help. Uh, my next environment and the people who live around me and the people who work with me, my domestic helpers and so forth. But, uh, but I mean, it's actually uh, a tragedy how unfair the whole policies of this uh, ESG and so forth have been because they penalize through inflation ordinary people and then rich, wealthy. Yeah, I seen an article, Dr. Faber, with this ESG and carbon, uh, you know, they're trying to reduce people's carbon footprint. Uh, in, in Europe, there's uh, there's one country where they want to cull off and basically kill 20 or 30,000 cows uh, due to, to reduce carbon footprint. Uh, what is your take on that? How, how bad is that when governments are pushing carbon credits and carbon, you know, trying to reduce people's farming. Millions of years ago, and it doesn't matter if it was one or five or seven million ago, years ago in the small ice period, there were 100 million bisons in America. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't heat up the climate. <laughs> so it's all BS. It's all BS. Carbon has very little to do with the climate. There are the other factors that are important, but carbon dioxide is not that important. But anyway, uh, these are issues uh, I wouldn't know enough about to give you an expert opinion. And I've been to conferences on the subject, 
where one expert said this because he was paid by universities and NGOs and so forth. Right. And then other experts said exactly the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's crazy. This is the reality. And on these topics, you know, there's like someone at an investment con conference tells you to buy the market and someone says to sell. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Uh, my sense is for now, uh, there is a bit too much enthusiasm in the market in terms of bullish sentiment. Right. But at the same time, the Fed, in my view, will continue to do one thing, and this is to print money. That's, and that's for this goal. reason alone, uh, okay, gold and silver haven't been acting well recently, but I would just, as a matter of principle and as a matter of core holding, always keep some gold and silver in my uh, portfolio of assets the way I would always keep some cigarettes and <laughs> lots of booze. <laughs> you know what? You're totally right. The, the Where do you think gold is heading now? Uh, by the end of 2023, a lot of us are in the boat where if the Federal Reserve does... Uh, either slow down on interest rates or pivot or even pause. We we the precious metals community thinks that gold and silver are going to go way a lot higher if they do reverse. Are you in that same camp? I'm not all that concerned about the price movement, right? As uh, the concern about expropriation. But if I just look today at the price chart of silver. Purely based on the chart and based on the assumption that between now and Christmas, the Vogue Fed will cut rates again or stop increasing rates. Mm -hmm. And in terms of interest rates, we're still below the rate of inflation. Based on these assumptions and based on the chart, which in the case of silver is forming an inverse head and shoulder formation, the price target by year end of silver should be over $30. Yeah, that's what we're really uh, waiting for. Over $30 would be would send the precious metals community going crazy, <laughs> especially in silver. Well, you know, that, but it doesn't matter whether silver is here or a bit lower. My plan, not, not my plan, my action is to buy every month some gold. Right. I don't care about the price. I just want to hold some gold. And I don't want to be in a situation where I have to make emotional decisions because it's down, I stop buying, or up, I stop buying. I have a standing instruction with a bank, buy every month. Wow, that's incredible. You're a true... You're a true gold stacker. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an enemy of the state. <laughs> uh, it's perfect. You're a friend of ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you so much, Dr. Faber, for coming on to Wall Street Silver. And uh, hopefully we can have you back on soon. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks right. a lot. No problem. Talk bye to bye. you soon. <laughs>